Section 2 is important because Section 2 defines various parts uh, of the functional definitions. The various concepts are defined in Section 2. There have been questions asked on Budapest Treaty, which is a treaty for deposit of microorganisms. Microorganisms are patentable. Section 3J of the Patents Act excludes patents for plants and animals and parts thereof. So plants and animals cannot be patented under the act, but in the same provision, uh, exception is made for microorganisms. So microorganisms are patentable throughout the world. And there is a provision in the international agreements, the TRIPS agreement, which allows for patenting microorganisms and microorganisms. When you compare it with plants and animals, you can see microorganisms as lesser forms of lives. Okay microorganisms being lesser forms of life and plants and animals being higher forms of life. So the law allows patenting of lesser forms of life and there are various justifications for that. But law itself does not allow for patenting plants and animals. There is a variance between the law and countries on this because some countries have patent protection for plants some countries have adopted what is called a sui generis or a special regime for granting protection for plant varieties. So you will find that countries are not in agreement on this, but almost all the countries are in agreement on granting patent protection for microorganisms. Microorganisms, one of the most difficult parts, if you are to regard microorganism at itself as an invention, describing a microorganisms becomes very hard. You know, how are you going to describe a microorganism? I can understand if it's an internal combustion engine or a fountain pen or a paper clip. I can actually describe in great detail the functioning. But living organisms and especially microorganisms, it will be very difficult for people to describe the entire microorganism, the way it functions, all the body parts and how it, they interact with each other and the cellular functions. So to get away with that, difficulty law has evolved a way to deposit microorganisms so that is the treaty what i just mentioned the budapest treaty is an international arrangement for the deposit of microorganisms for the purposes of patent procedure and this is whenever you use a microorganism you have to deposit a sample so that it's easy for people to know which microorganism which strain of bacteria for example you used and people can, if they want to replicate the invention, they can do that. Description or what we call the written description requirement or the sufficiency requirement. You can also call this the enabling disclosure requirement. This requirement requires an applicant who files a patent to disclose his invention in such a way that any person skilled in the art should be able to make that invention without recourse to the inventor, without having to ask or clarify anything with the inventor. So uh, in, in patent law, we say a prior art teaches because prior art or rather the patents are designed in a way to teach the world at large how to make and work the invention. So that there is a teaching element in patent law. And by some accounts, the 20 year monopoly is given, exclusivity is given in lieu of the teaching function. So when patents don't teach people how to make the invention, then it affects the teaching function. And co-jointly, you can say that the teaching function or the enabling disclosure function is not discharged. And that could be a ground for revocation of a patent. Section 64 has a ground on which you can revoke a patent because the enabling disclosure is not there. And opposition also, there is a ground on which a uh, patent can be revoked or cancelled or, or opposed because it does not satisfy the disclosure requirement. So for microorganisms, the disclosure requirement is taken care of by deposit because it's very hard to describe the full functioning of a microorganism. So we have the Budapest Treaty.